Hello, in this video I'm going to be going over ionization energy and the periodic trends that it undergoes. So it's good to know that, first of all, atomic radius, it increases as you go left and as you go down, making francium the largest. But if we're talking about ionization energy, fluorine has the highest uh, first ionization energy. So as you go left to right, it increases and going from bottom to top. It increases. And what is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to pull the outermost electron away. And as we go left to right, this uh, ionization energy, the amount of energy required to pull an electron away, increases because it gets closer and closer to satisfying the octet rule, meaning it has eight outer electrons. So it's most happy. The reason that ionization energy gets stronger as you go up the column is because there's less and less electrons. Therefore, it's easier for that nucleus to hold on to the fewer and fewer electrons that are present. So fluorine having um, the least, or actually this whole column having the least amount of electrons compared to these other rows. All right, doing an example problem. We have potassium, sodium, and cesium, and we want to list the following in order of increasing ionization energy. So we've got sodium, potassium, and cesium right here. Basically, as you go from the bottom and move up, you increase in ionization energy because there's less electrons that need to be pulled in. So cesium is going to have the lowest ionization energy, and then potassium, and then sodium. Doing another problem, we have rubidium, xenon, and strontium. So looking at these guys, we have rubidium is right here, xenon right here, and strontium. So they're all in the same row, so they have the same number of shielding so we're looking at the octet rule in this case. As you go left to right, they uh, become more and more satisfied. Um, so they have stronger electronegativity, which would make xenon having the highest ionization energy, because this one actually has a uh, satisfied octet. It doesn't want to give any up. Strontium being a little bit less, and rubidium having the least because rubidium just needs to give up one electron then it'll uh, have a satisfied octet because it's lower energy level will then have a satisfied uh, eight valence electrons doing the next one we have calcium versus calcium two plus calcium is right here and calcium two plus electron wise is going to look like argon so calcium two plus is going to have a stronger or higher ionization energy because it already lost two electrons. So now it has a satisfied octet. How does it have a satisfied octet? Let's look at the electron configuration. We have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. So it just lost its 2s electrons. Its new outer energy level is now 6, 7, 8. It has 8 valence electrons. So it's satisfied. It's not going to want to lose another one. Whereas calcium, that has these two electrons that it could lose. Uh, so it would be more willing to lose those. So the ionization energy of calcium is much lower than that of calcium 2+. plus. Doing one last problem, we have barium, cesium, cesium plus, and barium 2+. plus. Barium and cesium are right here. But barium 2 plus, again, looks like xenon electron wise. Cesium 1 plus looks like xenon electron wise. So ionization energy for the ions is going to be higher. So then we have to look at cesium and barium. Cesium has the lowest ionization energy because it just has one electron to give, give up. Whereas barium has two electrons to give up. So it's going to have a little bit higher ionization energy. 
And then we have cesium plus and barium 2 plus both look like xenon. However, cesium plus is going to be a little bit lower for the same reasons that cesium was a little bit lower than barium. And then barium 2 plus would be the next one. And that is ionization energy trends.